International Diabetes Federation is raising awareness on the impact that the health condition has on the family and support network of those affected and promoting the role of the family in the management, care, prevention and education on diabetes. One in two people currently living with diabetes are undiagnosed. The vast majority of these have type 2 diabetes. Left untreated or unmanaged, diabetes can lead to life-challenging complications. These include blindness, amputation, kidney failure, heart attack, and stroke. Our focus on this episode of Health Options is the growing number of people with diabetes and those at risk as we promote the role of the family in the management, care, prevention, and education on the health condition. Don't miss out on our nature's scanner as you will get to know some foods and plants you can use to manage diabetes the natural way. Welcome to the program. I am Wabi Abdullah. This is Health Options. The role of family in the management, care, prevention, and education on diabetes is our topic. And to take us through the discussion is Professor Felicia Anuma, consultant endocrinologist. We are glad to have you once again on Health Options, Professor Anuma. Thank you very much for inviting me. Okay. Um, what are those things that you're privy to as a professional who see patients and even the role families play in the whole of this. What has it been like? Thank you very much. Um, the family is very, very important um, in prevention of lifestyle diseases generally, including diabetes. There are two aspects to it. When we talk about prevention, it starts from the home. And the woman has a very strategic role to play here because she is the manager of the home. She prepares the food. Because when we talk about diabetes, food is a major factor. Also, if someone is diagnosed with diabetes in the home, the family is very important because that individual needs a lot of support from the family to be able to cope with the challenges that this diagnosis or this condition will bring. And an issue here has to do with even knowing the signs. If the woman you know, has an integral role to play in the family, knowing the signs is one thing. How can you know, family members support those signs? Okay. It's very important here to know that diabetes can be a silent disease until the onset of complications. Mm. So there may be no signs. Mm. Until an individual uh, is not seeing well, goes to the eye doctor and they, they tell the person after examining the eyes, oh, the changes you have that's not allowing you to see well is because of diabetes. Or somebody collapses suddenly in the office when blood sugar gets very, very high. They take the person to the emergency, have you had diabetes before? The answer will be no, but we check the blood sugar is very high and that's what is responsible for that. Or like you had mentioned earlier, somebody has a stroke or somebody has a heart attack. So it can be silent until the onset of complications. That's the dangerous part of diabetes. Now you can have people who will have what we call, well, the classical signs. Not everyone. Now, what are these classical signs? Okay, you see somebody losing weight. Mm -hmm. Actually, diabetes can make an individual lose weight and that person looks like somebody with HIV. Somebody can lose weight to that extent, okay? Or this person is um, feeling very weak, excessive fatigue, or this person is now 
is thirsty all the time, wants to drink water, wants to drink water, passing so much urine. Of course, what is happening is when the blood sugar is high, the kidney tries to help the individual to get rid of as much as possible. And the sugar will not come out without water. So that individual passes a lot of urine. So these can be the classical symptoms but i must warn it's not in everybody that you know you find these classical symptoms okay let, let, let's take a look at um because like i really mentioned earlier we're going to try to find out why the heart condition is on the increase and who are those at risk okay. because once you have that knowledge it keeps people on their toes even the family members yes yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the condition is on the increase. The reason is because, like I always say, we, we got civilized, including our food, and we began to acquire all the diseases of civilization. So diabetes is a disease of civilization. What are the risk factors? Aging is a risk factor because as we age, there are certain metabolic changes that occur in our bodies that will naturally tilt us towards the disease side of the spectrum of life. If we don't want to get to that side of the spectrum of life, then we must change behavior at some point. So blood sugar will rise naturally with age, blood pressure will rise with age if we don't do anything. There are certain habits we have in the urban setup that is not in the rural setup. Uh, in the 90s, there was a a prevalence study, a national prevalence study that was done for diabetes. And the finding then was that in a rural setup in Plateau, the prevalence was 0.6%. But in an urban setup like Lagos, it was 2.7%. So that's the difference between the rural setup and the urban setup. Now, diet is a very critical, you know, occupies a very central stage. And the reason is because we left the natural, naturally healthy Nigerian diet for the civilized, westernized, unhealthy diet. And in the urban setup, you, we, people are excited to get to, you know, this eat fast, 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 food, fast food. food. And these fast foods contain a lot of bad fat, they contain a lot of sugar, they contain a lot of salt. So, and when we take um, things that taste so sweet in our mouth all the time, they contain what we call refined sugars. And these sugars, they are sugars in their most easily absorbable form. So the moment you swallow them, the sugar runs to the blood and steps up the blood glucose. And once blood glucose is high, you know, the organ, there's an organ inside our abdomen we call the pancreas. Okay. That's where the chemical that you know, helps us to utilize everything we eat as a source of energy and nutrition comes from. And we call that chemical insulin. So once blood sugar is high, the pancreas is going to push out insulin to bring it down because it should not remain high. Now, when we stress these cells on and on and on, a stage comes, the cells get exhausted. And when they get exhausted, there is no coming back. So everything we eat now does not get to the cells, remains up there, and, you know, diabetes shows up. So physical activity, very important. Mm. You know, in this country, once we are getting affluent and all that, we no longer move. We have all manner of servants to help us do all sorts of things. So we and so to leave us everything we eat remain with us. And to maintain, you know, metabolic balance and maintain health, we need to burn whatever calorie we eat each day. We need to burn it out. Overweight and obesity is another very important risk factor. And in this country, again, there is a concept we have about weight. Weight. Mm. So, and when weight on his own can bring diabetes without a family history. So, people have to work very hard to maintain normal weight. If we have normal weight throughout our lifetime, we can prevent diabetes as much as 90%. Okay. As people age, naturally, they become predisposed to diabetes. What should we do to avert that? Okay. As now, we age. Now, yeah. As we are aging, mm. we definitely need to change behavior. Mm. Now, a 20 year old can eat. The size of pounded yam occupying this space. Are you getting me? But after he finishes, he gets to the field. He yeah. runs around and he burns all the calories off. But you see, as we age, we need to step down on the amount of calorie we take in and we need to be more active if we have to maintain metabolic balance. Because the, 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 the metabolic changes that occur in the body will make us accumulate fat and lose muscle. So if we are active and we are burning out that fat, then we are able to retain 
muzzle instead of you know accumulating fat because the fat cell is a very toxic cell it's a very dangerous cell so we must you know avoid it like plague so it's one thing to say one is diabetic another thing to keep it you know as control it as yeah. such that it does not um, get to where complications certain such that you get to see people get uh, limbs getting amputated and all of that how should it be properly managed to make sure it doesn't go beyond uh, the, the level it could be managed okay. and prevent complications from setting in. Prevention is the key. But if um, someone happens to get diagnosed with diabetes, management is also proper management, quality management of diabetes is also very critical if we have to avoid complications or delay complications. So people need to be checking their blood sugars because early diagnosis is very critical. If we make the diagnosis early and it is managed properly, we can prevent or delay complications. So um, that's why the family needs to support this person because the truth is this, management of diabetes is expensive. It's expensive, so you find families pulling you know, resources together to be able to help um, this individual. Blood sugar must be normal most of the time, if not all the time, if we have to avoid complications. So it means that this, this individual has to be regular at clinic visits. Um, there's what we call diabetes education, which is very important. In fact, it's more important than you know, writing tablets for these individuals because this person needs to be empowered to the level where he understands the disease and he's in charge and not the other way around. We, we make a statement that management of diabetes is the art of the possible. So we empower this person so that even 50% uh, of his care, he is responsible. So 50% of the time, he's his own doctor. And that is our responsibility. Our responsibility is to make sure that we empower this individual to be in charge. And that's why it's so important that they get to the correct place where they are managed properly. And I mean, there are people who have had diabetes for 40, 50 years. The device that they are supposed to be armed with at all time to check the... To check. Yes, yeah. they, they need, that is part of the empowerment. The they need uh, to the get the glucometers, you know, for themselves. They need, but that's why, how, why I said they need to be part of their management themselves. So they check their blood sugars frequently to know how high it is. Are they doing well? You know, are they not doing well? They themselves will know. Or maybe they went somewhere for a party and they have overeating and they check the blood sugar is high, then they can tell themselves, oh, it's like that, that food was nice. I over, you know, ate it. But okay, next time I'll step down on the side. It is, there is no quality diabetes management without the person having a glucometer to me measure his or her blood sugar by himself. Okay. For the benefit of um, those uh, living with the condition and uh, families affected, what are those ideal uh, rules expected of family? What should they really be doing? First of all, for them to understand what this disease is all about and the challenge that this disease has brought to the home, but they are not unsurmountable. And their role, first of all, in encouraging this individual, you can make it with diabetes. You can live your full lifespan with diabetes. All it needs is a little discipline here and there, you know, in what we eat and how active we are, and then coming to clinic regularly and, you know, being um, uh, compliant with medication. One of the big problems we have in this country, why the burden of complications is very high, is because uh, we run an out-of-pocket system. Mm -hmm. Our health insurance system, I would say, is still in the nursery stage. The coverage is quite low. So if, if an individual does not have money, then he cannot buy his what medications. What does that even a health insurance cover? At the moment, what, mm. what has at the moment, at the moment, he has some basic drugs, but they hardly cover complications of the disease. So if an individual is diabetic and has chronic kidney disease from diabetes, it's a problem. That's like a death sentence. If the person has gangrene of the foot and the leg has to be amputated, it's a, it doesn't, it's a problem, doesn't it? The person is on his or her own. So we need improvement in the level of coverage of health insurance for these chronic diseases like diabetes. Because many of them die because they are on their own and they don't have the resources, you know, to cope with what that level of care 
if somebody has heart failure from diabetes, I mean, that's, that's serious. Or somebody has a stroke yeah. and all that. So it, it requires a lot of resources to, for this individual to be able to cope with the new challenges that have come from the complications of diabetes. I was made to understand that the diabetic must never joke with breakfast. They should eat early. <laughs> Can you just well, on that? Well, um, Why the, is so? the thing is, we want them to eat regularly. It's not just breakfast. We want people with diabetes to eat regularly their breakfast, their lunch, and their dinner because of the, 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 the way the medications work. For example, if, you, if an individual is on insulin and with tablets, together with tablets, for example, or on insulin alone, you take it at night. Now, it will work on the blood sugar throughout the night. By morning, the blood sugar may become low. Mm. And if that individual does not eat and then goes to work, that is dangerous because no blood sugar actually on the immediate is more dangerous than high blood sugar, and we don't want that. That is part of the education we give this you know, individuals uh, on how to identify mm -hmm. signs of low blood sugar and, t and take care of it by themselves. Because if they don't identify the early signs and they collapse in the market, they collapse in the office or in the mosque or in the church, nobody will know what is wrong. Mm -hmm. So they may not be able to help them and actually it can lead to death. If they take their medication in the morning and they don't eat mm -hmm. breakfast they, or they eat breakfast, the medication will work up to lunch. Blood sugar would have dipped mm -hmm. at lunch time. So they need to take another meal so that the drug will have something to work on and not that the drug will now crash the blood sugar. And we try very hard to avoid low blood sugar because it is quite dangerous on the immediate. Well, maybe for the benefits of uh, those who are not managing it properly, you can just educate them on the basic do's and don'ts. The diabetes patient person must be regular at clinic visits. First of all, must identify, if possible, a diabetes specialist to take care of him or her. But if the person is in an environment where there's no diabetes specialist, at least a physician can take care of him or her. The diabetes person must have a glucometer to check the blood sugar by himself because he's his own doctor 50% of the time. Now, the diabetes person, of course, the issue of diet usually will be educated in, you know, by, uh, uh, when they go for clinic visits on what to avoid and what not to avoid, what to combine. Because actually for diabetes, yes, we say things that taste sweet, you know, in the mouth they shouldn't because it spikes up the blood sugar. Outside that, really, they can eat anything. The only clause is how much is that individual eating and with what that individual is eating that food. For example, a little portion of rice, but with a lot of vegetables. That's what I mean. Because vegetable is one of the sources of fiber and fiber is going to delay the rate of digestion of that rice. It is going to delay the absorption of glucose from that rice. The other thing is oil. That oil must be very small, whatever the name of the oil is. Because in diabetes the body has problem utilizing oil. So we don't want that individual to be taking so much extra oil, you know, in. Because when the oil level of the blood is high, it blocks, it acts like gum. So it blocks the blood vessels. oily food. Not avoid completely but oil. little oh, oil uh, very little oil in whatever mm -hmm. and then avoid you know fried uh, foods i mean we can put in the oven and do all kinds of things with them now the, the diabetes person must be physically active because physical activity or exercise is is treatment for the diabetes person it is treatment because when you exercise the muscles the muscles are active the muscles need glucose to burn as a source of energy for that activity so what the muscles will do is they will help you pull glucose from the blood and burn it and you, you use it as a source of energy for that activity so blood glucose drops so exercise is treatment for anybody who has diabetes so the, and the foot is very important in diabetes because 50 percent of you know the patients in my ward all the time in my unit they are there because of food problems and the amputation rate in this country is very high i had a 34 year old that way that had you know had to lose the two limbs from diabetes not even married yet at 34. Mm. so the foot must be well taken care of you know because wounds don't do well in diabetes so we don't want to see wounds at all in the foot i mean in the lower limbs of anybody with diabetes mm. okay so they mustn't walk barefoot Head, whether it's in the outside the home or at home, and they must, you know, inspect their food every day 
We tell them that if they are alone, they should get a small mirror, and with that, they can look under the food. Once they notice anything that was not there before, they must report in the hospital. They should not go to salon to do pedicure. Mm. It's very dangerous. I have had a lady who had amputation just from pedicure in the salon. Usually, the skin can get dry because of diabetes, so we want them to get creams that have moisture that will moisten the, the skin, because if the skin is dry, it, there are cracks there, and bacteria can enter that crack, and that can be the beginning of a big story tomorrow. Mm. So we, we talk to, and then when they take their bath, they should towel in between their toes. We don't do that usually, but for them, because we want to avoid wetness. Mm -hmm. Wetness can promote fungal infection, and fungal infection can be a reason for amputation tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Professor Felicia Anuma, for your insight into this uh, topic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. to take you to our nature scanner for foods and plants you can use to manage diabetes the natural way. Here we have the zogele, zogele leaf, uh, zogele, moringa, oleifera in the native uh, traditional name of uh, Zogele. The leaves are very, very powerful. They have uh, up to 100 uh, milligram worth of uh, vitamin C. And you know, with that level, it's already an antibiotics. There are all kinds of mixed infections in diabetics, and it has the capacity to also lower sugar level. Uh, next, before me, I have an array of products. Samia here in Hausa. Uh, we do usually, I do them in combination with okra leaves to get uh, one of the most potent uh, uh, mixture that can prevent diabetes. Red pepper, which has been used in combination with pineapple, in combination with uh, apple, and in combination with some other products to make a product that can cure big diabetic ulcer on the leg that refuses to heal. Such ulcers can be stopped and the leg will not be amputated. This is on record, Venonia and Magdalena, otherwise called bitter leaf. Bitter leaf is the chief of staff in the treatment of diabetics. It has the capacity, when you flow it from the mouth down to the various organs, it clears it, it detoxifies any sugar, sugar-like elements that are there, carbohydrates that leads to excessive sugar that causes uh, diabetics in the system. Uh, ginger does not work directly. It works when it is combined with some other products to bring out uh, diabetic effects. Now we have corn. You may hear that sucrose and other kinds uh, complicates diabetics. But when we have red, uh, yellow corn and uh, white corn, with their unique combinations, we, you, you have the capacity to reduce weight. So when this is combined in a usual way, I want listeners, you don't go on your own and start buying this thing from the market. You come to us for advice and we'll give you the rightful advice at the combinations you need. And this is for you to respect your kitchen so that all those things you see, they have medicinal effect. You do not just treat them anyhow. Alligator pepper, when uh, Samia is done, alligator pepper comes in, spinach comes in, then you, you form a very formidable uh, material that uh, reduces uh, sugar. Water leaf very, very powerful in reducing sugar level. It does not do this alone. It does, it does this in a combination form with uh, bitter leaf and co. It brings the sugar level to normal. It's a very, very powerful uh, leaf. As for garden egg, it's very powerful. When we combine the different colors, this is green. There is the yellow type, there is the white type. When I, what I do, I combine the three of them to bring sugar level to his needs. That's our package on this week's episode of Health Options. A quick reminder that you can go to our YouTube channel to watch the upload of these and other episodes of the program. Email us for your comments and contributions at healthoptions at nta.gov.ng. My name is Rabi Abdullah. Thanks for watching. 
Hope to see you again.